Mm -hmm. I'm a Shia Muslim. Um, you talk about praying in unison. We do that as Muslims. Um, you bring up these different points as to how your God is not my God because you see um, Jesus Christ as, mm -hmm. I guess, the um, the image of God, correct? Mm -hmm. As God in human form. God in human form, okay. Mm -hmm. So then, um, Jesus is a prophet, Prophet Isa, within mm -hmm. the Muslim culture. Mm -hmm. So, as a Muslim, like, we respect other religions, we call them people of the book. Mm -hmm. If you respect another religion, there's no wrong religion in that essence. Like, from your standpoint, because I am Muslim, because I have an Imam who is not a messenger, but an interpreter, mm -hmm. am I, is my religion wrong or askew in any context? I have the utmost respect for Muhammad in the way, after growing up as an orphan in poverty, he makes one of the five pillars, almsgiving, giving to the poor. I respect that highly. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Secondly, I respect Muhammad for the way he led the Arab people out of polytheism into monotheism. I think that's outstanding. Obviously, where I disagree with Muhammad is regarding the identity of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? Obviously, the Quran teaches that Jesus is not God. He's a good prophet. Obviously, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John insist Jesus claimed to be God, and he did things as God. He accepted the worship of people as being an appropriate response to him. So obviously, my question from my Muslim friends is, are you sure that Jesus is just a prophet? Obviously, Muhammad was not born until 500 years after Christ, so he never met Jesus. The eyewitnesses insisted Jesus claimed to be God. He accepted worship as appropriate. So, who is Jesus? I mean, if I look at the lessons of Jesus, like in my room, I have the Bible and then I have the Quran. And I've legitimately started reading both of them and pretty much just putting on my own synthesis as to the comparisons between the two. Mm -hmm. And as you go through these lessons, you see they are very similar mm -hmm. in more than one manner and probably every single matter, except for the fact that Jesus is God or Jesus is not God and he is a prophet. I think that's probably the start, like the, the largest difference between the two. But if I'm taking those lessons that Jesus gave as my, a prophet to me, as a God to you, if I take those lessons and I follow them properly, except for the part about Jesus being a God, why would that make me incorrect? And if I am incorrect, does that put me at a lesser heaven or to a hell rather than going to where every, like, I guess, proper Christian would go? Oh, well, proper Christians deserve to go to hell. The only reason a Christian goes to heaven is because they realize I deserve hell, but Christ bled and died on a cross for my sin, and I've accepted his sacrifice for me. So proper Christians don't go to heaven because they're proper people. All right? It's all grace. Now, you see, that is a basic contradiction between Islam and Christianity. You know, in Islam, you have to fi follow the five pillars, and you better do it well. And if you do it well, you go to heaven. And if you don't do it well, you go to hell. Jesus Christ says, no, you don't go to heaven by following the Ten Commandments or by following the Sermon on the Mount. You go to heaven because you realize, I am in desperate need of God's forgiveness, His mercy, His grace, and I throw myself upon Christ for that forgiveness, for that grace. You see, so you can't have it both ways. Either heaven is something that we earn and we deserve because we've kept the rules, or heaven is a gift that God gives us by grace. And so, like, as a Muslim, and so I'm a Shia, Ismaili, and Imani, and I'm Muslim. I'm about 1% of the whole Muslim population. I'm this really small sect. And the very first line in the Quran, or anything that any of our prayers is, Bismillah or Imani Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And essentially the way that we've been taught that um, from our Imam, the interpreter, um, mm -hmm. Aga Khan IV, mm -hmm. the way it works out is, man will sin right like it's it, like it's gonna happen no matter what and the way that we've been taught it, it is our goal to continuously approach and try to better ourselves and we do need God for that forgiveness and I to me it seems like what um, what you preach is the same thing that I've been preached to my whole life hmm. okay except that the question is how does God forgive remember God is unchanging right okay. so you and I both agree God is unchanging well then if God is unchanging how does he forgive me for my evil, for my wrongdoing? That's where the cross of Christ is so crucial. Because Christ claims that the evil that I have done has to be punished, because God is just. And forgiveness cannot contradict justice. God's not schizophrenic. At the cross, Christ lays down his life to absorb the just penalty for our wrongdoing, thereby offering us the option of forgiveness if we choose it. 
Tsi So. Obviously, in the Quran, the idea of Christ going to the cross is unacceptable because God would never allow a good prophet to die such a horrible death, right? But in the Gospels, what we have is they're not biographies. They focus on this cruel, crass death of Christ on a cross. Why do they focus on that? Because Jesus insisted that it's his death on the cross that's the linchpin. It's the key to reconciliation with God. It's the way God forgives us by absorbing the penalty for our sin, thereby offering us forgiveness. So his justice is honored and he offers mercy, forgiveness.